Welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. This is the only show that brings you awesome people just like you who got sick and tired of doing something they don't like and don't care about and have created an amazing life of freedom using what they know instead of just getting paid for what they do. And now, here's your host, the quit working guy, Jeff Steinman. Hello and welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. This is episode number 52 and if you've been paying attention, we do one episode a week and since there's 52 weeks in a year, that means this is the 52nd episode of the How to Quit Working Show. Now a lot of folks have been with us the entire year and I... I thank you for tuning in, and I, I get your emails, I get your comments, and I'm so glad that you're enjoying the show and that you're getting lots of great stuff out of the show. And and keep tuning in. And if you like the show, please leave a review, uh, leave a rating on iTunes. That's a way that'll help us get up in the charts so that more people can get this great information, and so that more people can quit working and launch the life of their dreams. Now, I wanted to do something special for this show, and I am definitely doing something special here, but we're going to get to that in a second because I want to read uh, a review that I got on how to quit working. And you know what? what I think is so cool about this book is that people who have already created successful lifestyle businesses are getting stuff out of the book and they're giving me great comments about the book. They're saying, Jeff, I've already done this, but I still learn a ton and get a great deal of information from your book. And Bob Baker is one of those people. Bob has been uh, making a living full time uh, with uh, what he does, teaching people how to do music marketing for over 10 years. And he's an amazing guy. And he had this to say about how to quit working. Bob says, I love the idea of designing a life and making a living based on what you know. That's exactly how I created my own DIY career. In How to Quit Working, Jeff expertly shows you how to take the valuable assets that sit between your ears and turn them into a profitable life. Livelihood. Bravo. And that's from Bob Baker, who is the author of the DIY Career Manifesto and the Gorilla Music Marketing Handbook. Bob, thank you for that awesome, awesome comment. And if you want to get a copy of How to Quit Working, go to howtoquitworking.com slash book. And for a limited time, I'm offering $150 worth of bonuses just for buying that book. It doesn't matter what format you buy, you get all the instructions there. So head over to howtoquitworking.com slash book and learn how to create an amazing life of freedom. And speaking of creating an amazing life of freedom, I have on the show today returning after 52 weeks plugging away at his at his career, Travis Sherry's the founder of Extra Pack of Peanuts. That's an awesome website where he teaches people how to travel inexpensively using frequent flyer miles and other kind of travel hacks. And he was making great progress. He was he had an awesome business when we talked to him a year ago. But what we're going to find out today is what happens when you start an awesome business like this and then you stay with it for a year and keep plugging away and plugging away and plugging away at it. And Travis is going to tell us about all of the awesome stuff not only the travel that he's done this year, but the awesome growth that his business has seen in this past year. Travis, welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm glad to be here again. It's nice to be on the other side of the mic. Yeah, this is this is the one year anniversary of the How to Quit Working Show. And Travis, you were the very first guest ever on the How to Quit Working Show. It was it was one of my favorite episodes, and it and it still is. And I thought, what Fun. How much fun would it be for the one-year anniversary to bring back the first guest and talk about what has happened in the past 12 months? Where have you gone in the last 12 months? What have you done in the last 12 months? How has your business and your life moved forward in the past 12 months? And because we've stayed in touch outside of the show, I know that you've got a lot of really awesome stuff to share with our listeners. And I'll just start with an anecdote. You know that. So if if you don't know, Travis uh, teaches people how to how to travel uh, less expensively using cheap frequent flyer miles and other other kind of cool travel hacks. And and this guy, he, he definitely practices what he preaches because I, I reached out back in January and I asked if he'd be willing to come back and do the show. And I got this long list of dates of all the crazy, fun, exotic places that you're going to be at. So we had to like slot this in in like a two-week period while you're going to be uh, at your home. But anyway, so uh, Travis, tell us a little bit about what's what's been going on the past year. 
Yeah, so I wear the badge of being the first guest proudly, by the way, and yeah. I hope your listeners have a little bit of time because, yeah, it, there has been a lot going on in the last year. Jeff, when I was on one year ago, we, we talked a lot about the business and everything was kind of in uh, the formative stage. Like I was trying to figure out what to do. I had actually, that January, so about a year and three months before that, had had my income go from you know about $6,000 to $0 in one day when I was cut um, from my one affiliate sales company. And I had to kind of recreate the wheel. And that's what I've been doing the, the last year. I've taken what I had and I've said, all right, this is good. The website is good, but how can I now monetize it? And I have learned in one year more than I did in the other 29 years of my life. So <laughs> it has been a wild, crazy ride. You're right. I have done it while traveling to a bunch of awesome places. And a lot of the community members of Extra Pack Peanuts have been going to a lot of cool places too. So Overall, it's been an amazing year, but definitely with some peaks and valleys, as everyone who's an entrepreneur knows. That's awesome. Well, tell us tell us a little bit about, because we, we want to learn some of the stuff that you've learned. We want to learn more about all that, but I think really what we want to know is, what, tell us about some of the cool places you've been in the past year. Yeah, so where to start? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of where in the last year. My, my most recent trip, I just got back from a three-week trip in China. That was the first time I'd been to China. I was able to get there because there's a very cheap airfare that I found. It was $550 round trip from my home in Philly what, to go to Shanghai. What would that normally cost? Normally, you're looking at $1,200, probably around there, $1,200, okay. $1,300. So it was, about, it was more than half off, a uh, really cheap ticket. I decided, hey, I've never been to China. Even when I lived in Japan, I didn't make it to China. Let's go to China. And it was this idea of, hey, we're going to go for a few days, me and my wife. Then it turned into... Well, here's some really cool places we didn't know existed in China. Now let's extend the vacation. Ended up being a three-week trip through China with my wife and my best friend who hadn't been out of the country for a while. Um, so we just did that. We'll be going to Europe for two months now here in a couple of weeks. So that's on the horizon there. Um, in January, two months ago, we did Italy for 10 days. Um, yeah, a lot of domestic travel in the U.S. the past year. New Orleans, San Francisco, Seattle a road trip through Canada for three weeks. Just a lot of really, really fun, awesome experiences. That is, that's, that's awesome. Well, tell us about some, you, you mentioned that, that uh, members of your Extra Pack of Peanuts community have gone to some really cool places. What's the coolest thing that uh, one of your customers or community members have done? Yeah, there is so many. And one of the cool things I'm doing with the redesign of the site is it's going to be interactive where people can actually post pictures of places they've been. And oh, wow. Let's get, yeah, I'm going to let you in a little secret here. We're going to try to get one EPOP community member to every single country in the world. So we're looking to nail all 193 countries at some point, um, just as you know, a crazy pie in the sky. Hey, we're going to do it no matter how long it takes type thing. Um, but I did just have someone who I actually helped them book their tickets. It was a family of five. And when he emailed me, I thought, all right, even I can't pull this off. This is crazy. They wanted to go around the world. And they wanted to basically, they were starting in Washington, D.C. They wanted to go to Vienna. Then they wanted to go down to Jordan and see Petra. Then they wanted to go to Bangkok, followed by some of the Thai islands, and then come home to Washington, D.C. And I told them, all right, there's five of you. This is going to be near impossible to find the dates. Um, long story short, I was able to actually work it out. It, it worked quicker than I thought it would somehow. Wow. And, um, we booked him what would cost the same amount of miles for him to go to Washington, to Bangkok, and back, just point A, point B, back to point A. We were able to get him Vienna, Jordan, and the Thai Islands all included in that for the same amount as it would cost for him to go from um, yeah, Washington to Bangkok. So 65,000 miles a person and $80 out of pocket for each person. $80 out of pocket for each person for a family of five. Right. So total 400 bucks and they, you know, what is that? About 320,000 miles, which sounds like a lot, but you can actually earn, you can earn that amount of miles fairly quickly. Um, you know, if you, if you know some tips and tricks. Wow. Which you can get at extrapackofpeanuts.com. So now, you know, one of the things that the, the, list, the folks listening to this show today, uh, a vast majority of them did not listen to that first episode because I, I think there may have only been like five or ten people that <laughs> listened to that first episode. Thanks for coming but, back, guys. <laughs> yeah. But for the other for the other folks who didn't hear that first episode, tell us a little bit about uh, what was your transition? Because I mean, you didn't always have this awesome company and website that helps people travel around the world for for really inexpensively. But uh, what did you do before then? 
Yeah, so I'm very blessed to be able to do this full time now, and it has been a struggle, but well worth it. And we can get into all the you know nitty gritty de- details there. But before that, I was a high school um, history teacher, so I taught high school history for about four years. I took a job in Switzerland as part of a graduate program and, and lived there for five months. And that's what kind of spurred me on to, hey, I don't just want to travel places, but I actually want to try to live abroad for an extended period of time. Mm. That then brought me to live in Japan for two years. I was teaching English there. And during that time from June 2010 to June 2012, that's when I started my website. The last half of that um, trip, or not trip, the last half of that. So in January 2012, I started a website with the idea that I wanted to be location independent. I wanted to have a company that I ran, that I put my name on, that I could be proud of, and that I could make money from. And I wanted to be able to live wherever I wanted to be able to live. And we all know the internet allows us to do that. So I I did about eight months of building my website with the hope that when I moved home in August 2012, it would be big enough that I could do it full time. And I, I hit that point. Um, It wasn't a lot of money by any stretch. We're talking, you know, entry level job money. But I was able to then write my book and go into that. And since then, I've been able to grow it. I I told you it went down to zero dollars. And since then, that was about January of 2013. I've now been able to grow it into a business that does very well and makes me more than I would had I had a traditional teaching job. Oh, wow. Okay. So now you've surpassed the income that you would have had had you stayed in your teaching job. So it, it's been it's been a wild ride over the past year for you. What's what's the biggest change since since twelve months ago? Yeah, so twelve months ago, I didn't know where I was going to make money. Really, I told you I'd mm. done affiliate sales for credit card companies, and I promoted credit cards that worked for people who wanted to travel, and that was the gist of what I did. I told people, hey, here's how you get frequent fire miles. Here's how you keep your credit score high. And here's the best credit cards for you to get if you want to travel to Italy, Australia, whatever. And so I was making affiliate commissions off that. It was working out for everyone because I was making money off of it. I was giving advice to people so that they could travel for free. And and the credit card company was you know, making money or, you know, getting new customers. It was a win, win, win. Everybody was It happy. was a win, win, win until they said, hey, you know, we don't really like people who write op-ed pieces about our stuff. We just want someone to talk about that it's the best and, and give bullet points. And I was writing more in-depth, lengthy, hey, make sure you know this, this, and this. So I, long story short, I got cut, got down to zero dollars and thought, all right, well, I still have this website. I still have a community. It is growing rapidly. But now how can I make money off of it? This affiliate stuff isn't working. Um, Luckily, before that, I knew it could have fallen off. So I wrote my own book and I promoted that a little bit. But what I learned was I'm not such a good promoter, really. I enjoyed writing the book and I thought, hey, I'm going to write the book. It's going to sell great. That's it. And like most people wrote it, put it out there. It did okay. But then I didn't continue on. I think that's something I learned was that it's a process. Once you're Uh done writing, as you well know, It's not over. Um, So I started scratching and clawing for ways to make money. I did not want to go back to a regular job. I considered it a bunch of times. I I interviewed for some jobs I thought were interesting even, but I knew I wanted to work for myself. So I said, what can I do? And I started doing uh, private consulting where I would, people would come to me with frequent fire miles and say, I want to go to Italy. How can I book this ticket? Or, you know, I'm a family of five. I want to do this. So I would start charging for my services there. Very time intensive, very difficult because if we didn't, if I didn't book them a ticket, then I was not making any money. You know, I could spend hours and, and make zero dollars if it didn't work out. But at that point, that's what I had to do. So this idea of passive income was not happening at that point. And mm. I was still writing my blog and, and pumping out content, but I wasn't making much money off of it. And that's when I decided, what's the next thing I can do? And I started running video courses. So it's called Frequent Flyer Boot Camp. And it's it's like the book, except the way I describe it is it's more hand-holding. It's, okay. you know, a month long, you get videos. Uh, sent to you every every week. You get a batch of videos. You watch them. We have live weekly conference calls with everyone in the group, and there's a private Facebook group. So I'm literally walking people through. Here is how I would book these tickets, step by step by step, so that they have the knowledge. So after I teach them, they can book themselves their own tickets for for life. So, yeah, just a lot of awesome. figuring out what works. And and you know, I I created that product from scratch. I put it out there. We're now actually running the fourth session, so we've run three other sessions, and that has been, uh, it's been an okay moneymaker, a decent moneymaker, but really it's been more fun than I ever could have imagined, and it's been so rewarding to me. So, you know, the money's one part of it, but obviously enjoying what you do is the other, and I've 
been able to find that out um, and, and kind of get that balance over the last year. But like I said, it's been back and forth for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you've really gone from this kind of affiliate model where you were uh, sort of promoting these other these other people's products to having more of your own products. And uh, maybe could you talk a little bit about, because I know we have a lot of folks out there who I get emails from folks and they're like, well, what do you think about, you know, just doing affiliate sales for this company or that company? And, and I think that there's, um, I don't want to steal your thunder, but there's maybe some pitfalls, right, that come with, and, and that I think you can probably speak to better than anybody right now, that, that come with promoting other people's stuff versus having your own stuff. Yeah, there are. And luckily now, because my site has grown, I think when we last talked, let's say we were getting 25,000 visitors a month, roughly. And now in the, we're, we're topping out at around 100,000 visitors a month now. Wow. So the, the community has grown rapidly, and, and that's because of content. And interestingly enough, those affiliate companies, those credit card companies who before said, hey, we, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. You're not big enough. You're not worth our time is, is in essence what they were saying have come back to me now and said, well, you know, now you like, they've seen the numbers. They've seen that I've worked with other credit card (laughs) companies and, and done well with other credit card companies. And so they've come back and said, all right, we want to start working together. So we have a, a delicate balance right now. So I wouldn't tell people not to do affiliate sales. I would just tell them it's obviously best to diversify. And the pitfalls are the biggest one is that you don't have control over what you're selling. You know, if you're selling an affiliate product, for example, I, you know, if I'm selling a credit card or telling people to get a credit card, well, tomorrow that credit card could go from having a great sign up bonus to all of a sudden they decide not to give a sign up bonus. Mm. Well, I might still get paid to refer people to that credit card, but I'm not going to refer them because it, it's not worth it anymore. So that same stuff can happen with, with info products that other people have. You know, maybe they don't want to sell it anymore. So if you're making a good living selling someone else's product and it changes for, for the worse or they pull it, or they just say, like they did to me, you can still promote our products. We're just not going to pay you for it. <laughs> well, then, you know. You, and you're like, let me get right on that. <laughs> right. So, and, 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 and I did that credit card company that dropped me. I still promoted their products because they mm. were the best. So, you know, y- you really are. It's, it's a delicate, delicate process. You're on thin ice. I would say, you know, make sure, A, that you believe in the product wholeheartedly and that you would promote it if you weren't getting paid. That's a big thing. And that's what I did. I still promoted them even though I wasn't getting paid. Now that they've come back to me, obviously it's nice to get paid for it. But um, <laughs> that's the first thing. And the second is, you know, you want to diversify because you never know when it's going to get pulled. You don't have control over the content and stuff like that. So if you can create your own products or figure out enough affiliate marketing where you're promoting maybe 10, 15, 20 products, and all of them are income streams, then you don't kind of get chopped down with just one fell swoop. So diversify. Definitely. Is, is really the, the, uh, the key message there. Definitely. Awesome, awesome. Well, Travis, tell us a little bit about uh, what, what are some of the, you, you talked about the affiliate sales thing, but what, what are some of the other struggles that you've faced over the past 12 months? Yeah, I would say other than the affiliate sales and, and the how am I going to get money, which everyone's going to go through <laughs> unless they fall into a pot of gold and they're just or they're really smart right off the bat. Everyone's going to try to struggle with that. How am I going to get money? And what I would say with that is a figure out the talent that you have. For me, it was frequent fire miles. So I started saying, well, now I can book for people. I can be a travel agent with frequent fire miles. It made me money. It made me enough to get through. If you're someone who's starting a business you know, and you have a full-time job, stay with that full-time job if you can and do it on the side. Like you don't want to have to be in the position where you have to make money like I was in. Mm. The other thing that comes with that is I have had a very, very tough time balancing work and not work, I guess Mm. is what you'd call it. I won't even call it play. I mean, I live, I get to live in all these places. I get to travel. It's really, really great. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. But there are days where I wake up in the morning and my mind is just on constantly all day. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And, you know, it, it's 11 p.m. and I can't shut it off. And I think, oh, I, you know, I can't sleep because I have something else to do. So that has been very, very hard. And I've, I've tried to now build a schedule in of, hey, you're going to wake up early. You're going to do work. You're going to almost have what would be a nine to five job as a way to shut myself down. And uh, I still struggle with it. Don't get mm. me wrong. It, it doesn't work. I have a conference call tonight at like 11.30 p.m. So, <laughs> you know, do what I say, not what I do. But 
that has been a, a struggle and and it's tough especially when you're traveling because you're if you're traveling you're going to want to see all these places but you also know well i have to keep up with my work too so that that's a that's a tough thing to do um i would say the third biggest challenge then in that is finding your voice and finding your calling like i knew i wanted to teach people about frequent fire miles but I went through, should I post three times a week, every day, short articles, long articles. I'm sure you are you kind of are used to that. You yeah. don't know what to do. Everyone's telling you something different. They're telling you short articles are oh, better for SEO. Oh, so true. Yeah. Long articles are better because it builds your community relationships and they get to know you. Blah, 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 blah. And I have literally, it, probably for six months now, just gone on an information diet where I've said, you know, I'll still read a few, few business entrepreneur stuff here and there, but I've, I've just cut it out. And I've said, I have to do what I think is right. And, you know, you find your voice naturally over time and it takes a lot of time. And I just said, what can I actually do that's going to keep me sane? And the biggest advice I can give is write for yourself or, or, or do, you know, record a podcast for yourself. You want to f figure out who your ideal listener is, and it's probably you. That's probably the person that you can speak mm. to the best. So if you put yourself as the ideal person, write what you enjoy. If you enjoy longer articles and people going more in-depth, write that. If you enjoy short articles, write that. Or do a mix. Don't always think there's a right answer because you get into your own business because you don't want to be told there's a right answer. You want to do it your own way. And that's what I've had to learn is that there's not always a right answer. Do it to the best I can and be happy with that. You know, you, you said you went on an information diet, and I think that's that's so important to, to do every once in a while because you have to reach that point where you're like, okay, I've taken in all this information, and that's great, and I've processed it, and now I'm just going to go do what the hell I want to do because that's what I have to do, right? Because that's what it takes to make a successful business. And I think so much of that information comes from people that have – one success, right? They they do something and it's successful, and all of a sudden they go out and, well meaning, I suppose, they tell everyone how they did it, and then it sort of becomes gospel, right? You have to you have to write short articles, or you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. So, uh, so yeah, that's I think that's a really important thing to remember because I think folks, when they're in the beginning stages of their business, are so incredibly hungry for information. That they're just grabbing on to every everything and looking for that one secret magic bullet. Have you found that one secret thing that has just been the thing that skyrocketed you to success? Well, believe it or not, I don't think the difference between putting a pop-up on your blog or not putting a pop-up on your blog is going to make you an overnight millionaire or not make you an overnight millionaire. There are definitely things that help and I I can relate 100% with what you said I was that person who wanted all the information in the beginning I, I I kind of took all that in I it drove me crazy I changed stuff every day I didn't know what to do and I was literally just you know mentally ragged and that's why I went on the information diet and what I found is I still remember all that stuff that people wrote and I, you know, I'll put it in here and there, but now it's in a way that's natural. I'm not trying to do it all at once. I, mm. I'm like, oh, I remember that that guy said making your text a different color or something is better. <laughs> but you don't have to do it yeah. all at once. That The magic bullet, I think, is not doing it all at once. The magic mm. bullet is saying be happy with what you've done. Like, do it. Get it out. It's not going to be perfect. And especially online, like you can always change. I could change my website right now if I thought it sucked. And I do, and I am changing it as we speak. Yeah. But, you know, be happy. Get something out and just start doing it because so many people get this paralysis or, you know, by analysis or whatever they call it. I think there's a cool term for it where they don't do anything because they think they have to do it perfect. And yeah. you'll find that people, A, resonate with you if you're honest about your struggles and, and obviously your successes and that you don't have all the answers and also if you put it out there they're gonna like you for you you know mm. that's the point of a lot of a lot of information products and a lot of bugs are trying to give everyone the answers what I found is people resonate with me not exactly what I'm teaching although they love the frequent fire stuff but they resonate because I'm living a life that I'm teaching them to do and they see that and they want to learn about that so just kind of relaxing and being yourself and just falling into it that's that is the key in my mind and that's that's the best person you can be is yourself so if you try to be someone else you you're probably gonna fail and everyone has their own unique skills and abilities and I know it sounds cliche but being the best you is is the best you can be and that doesn't have to mean 
outside of the online realm. It can mean on your blog, on your website, in your information product, be yourself. You know, you, you said just put something out there and it's not going to be perfect and it's totally okay if it's not perfect. And you also said talk openly about your struggles and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's interesting. Yesterday, in preparation for this show, I listened to that first ever episode of the How to Quit Working show that I did where, where you were the guest. And uh, I, I went back and I was like, wow, that really sucked. <laughs> yeah, and it probably sucked on my end too because I had never, I didn't have a podcast at that point, right? And I didn't have any of the equipment and I now I run a podcast, I'm a host, so I feel much more eloquent when I speak. Yeah. So, but we did it, right? Or yeah. you did it. You got yeah. me on and that started the show. Yeah. And here we are a year later. And we wouldn't be here a year later had I not recorded that kind of sucky episode of the How to Quit Working show a year ago. Uh, so I think that's a, that's a huge testament to, to just being able to just roll up your sleeves and just put something out there and be totally okay with it not being perfect. Yeah, I am with you. I, I started a podcast myself, and I didn't have any clue how to do it, much like you probably did not have any clue. And I just said, I'm going to do it because there are no good travel podcasts out there. There just wow. aren't. That and is hard to believe. It is. I, and I shouldn't say no good ones, but they're all destination based. Hey, you want to go to Rome? Uh, here's, you know, here's how what to do in Rome. I wanted to do it where I brought people on much like you do, interviewed them about why they travel. They're probably a travel expert in fitness or a travel expert in food and how to eat safe in different countries or house sitting or, you know, some people on frequent flyer miles. And I just wanted them to talk about their experiences. And we do touch a lot on location independence and entrepreneurship as well because you know, they kind of mesh there. If you want to travel a lot, you probably want to be location independent. Yeah. But I had no clue, Jeff. I had no clue how to do it. It sucked. You know, I listened to some of the first episodes. I'm like, this is awful. But I, I did it. And now, you know, it's a success and I love doing it. So, you know, even if it wasn't a success, I didn't like doing it. So I canceled after a few episodes. No big deal. You gave it a shot. Yeah. Yeah, you know, everybody who podcasts just really loves it. It really is a lot of fun. And I think you know, one of the things about podcasting in particular is that it gets you into a marketplace. It gets you into the iTunes marketplace. I can't, whenever I encounter somebody, I always try to ask them, well, where did you hear about how to quit working? And so many times it's, I Googled how to start a business, or not Googled. Uh, I hate that Google has like taken over the word search, you know? Um, I searched on uh, iTunes for how to start a business or something like that, and that's and that's how folks discovered uh, this show. How do you find that a lot of folks discover extra pack of peanuts on iTunes? I actually don't know. One of the things I need to get much better with, and this goes back to the just learning as you go and doing it in the beginning. You know, the show I I know how many downloads we get. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's about ten thousand a month now, but I don't know where they come from, and I know podcasting is a little harder than than getting analytics for blogs um i will say though that i do know that a ton of my readers who used you know they, they might still read the the blog as well but they've come to me and they say we love the podcast because you know we don't have to read all the information and mm. so i i get a lot of emails saying like we love the podcast keep doing it when i wasn't consistent with the podcast you know, I, I'd record like a few and i put them up and then I wouldn't do one for a month. I would get emails from people being like, we're craving this next podcast, this or that. <laughs> and that's not because it's the that's best awesome. podcast in the world, but because there was none in that niche and they liked what I did, then, you know, I, I said I have to start becoming more consistent. And now we do one a week. But yeah, I I think podcasting, if you're considering doing it, there really aren't enough good podcasts out there. And that sounds crazy because there are a lot of podcasts out there. But like I said, there was no podcast out there that interviewed travelers. None. Wow. Like none that talked about their stories. And everyone wants to hear a good travel story and, and expertise about travel. And so I decided to create it. And uh, fortunately enough for me, I have two listeners slash readers who now have created their own podcast, kind of doing the same thing, which is great because oh, awesome. they said, oh, would you would you feel like I'm stepping on your toes if I created my own podcast? So I was like, I need someone to listen to. I don't want to listen to myself. <laughs> so yeah, thankfully they're doing, one is trying to do one a day and the other is trying to do about one a week as well. And I welcome people with open arms because it's not really competition. It's it's it, There's not a lot out there. And if you're interested in doing podcasting, I would 100% uh, be an advocate of it. 
It's a lot. Of, it's a lot. A lot of fun. You know, we had Jonathan Taylor uh, of the Beginner Internet Podcast on uh, the show back over the summer. And one of the things that he said I thought was so interesting was that consistency is so much more important than quality. Yep. He drove. He really drove home the the point of uh, consistency in podcasting. He has one of the you know top thirty internet marketing podcasts, which is quite a quite a feat in that very competitive niche. Travis, what's the biggest mistake that you'd say you've made over the past twelve months? The biggest mistake. In 12 months, well, I, I would, I think most people would think that I would say, you know, losing the affiliation with, with the credit card company. Mm. And, but you know what? To me, it really was a blessing in the fact that mm. it forced me to scramble. And I didn't do anything wrong as well. You know, I, they, they just came to me and said, you're too small. It's not worth the oversight. You know, you write stuff we have to read to make sure it's correct. And you're too small. You're not bringing enough sales. And they were also a little upset that I wasn't promoting cards that had worse offers. Um, so huh. not not that I'm on a moral high ground here, but I just told them I will tell people about the best offers, whether you're paying me for that card or not, because they'll pay you for a few cards and not for others. And I said, I you know I'm going to tell them the best one, and if that doesn't get me money, that's fine. So you know a lot of people would say, well, man, that sounds like such a failure, and you know it sucked. Like. Don't get me wrong. It sucked <laughs> every way in terms of monetary, and I was crushed. It actually happened on my birthday, oh, and man. so it's like, like my wife will tell you, I, it takes a lot to get me down. I, I don't even know if I've really technically ever been depressed, you know. And that was very close. For a week and a half, I just thought, now I got to get a job, and but it forced me to scramble. So yeah, probably the biggest mistake I made, I I would say, you know, that isn't. I I would say not actively promoting my stuff enough and you know it feels very salesy to go on and say you should buy my book or you should get my boot camp and stuff like that but if you really believe that your product or your service or whatever it is is good and it's a good value then you should be telling people about it and mm. again this still feels foreign for me to do but you know you get one email out of a hundred that says like I unsubscribe to your newsletter because it sounds too salesy and you know I let that get me down all the time to the point where I wasn't promoting my stuff and then I thought this is one person who emailed me and said yes. that I have hundreds of people who have bought the book I have hundreds of people who have done the boot camp that have written me like this is awesome we love it and 95 percent of the stuff that I have is free so Letting one person, one hater, I wouldn't even call him a hater. I mean, maybe it was too salesy for them. But letting one person's opinion drive your decisions, a negative opinion drive your decisions, is the path to failure. And so I true. learned that, you know, the hard way because I wasn't making sales. And, you know, I, I had one of my most loyal readers, a person would email me maybe every other week. You know, I knew his name. We talked a lot. And... I had I was running my third session of boot camp and he said, Hey, how come I've never heard about this before? Like uh. well, I've already run some sessions, I put up videos, you know, and he was like, I have never heard about it. I didn't even know you had a book. And this is a guy who's on my site every other day. So Wow. He wow. said that I thought, listen, he's not gonna be put off by me putting a banner about my book. You know, he's he's coming and getting a free information, that's fine. The fact that he didn't know it was available was the issue. And yeah, that it's very hard to kind of um, get in your like like get in yourself and say I have to push this more because most of us aren't overly salesy and you see people who are good at it and you're like wow they're so good at it, they don't sound salesy but you just do it in a natural way I tell people ninety five percent of my stuff is free you can come and learn almost everything you want on my site for free if you want the convenience you can get the book if you want even more convenience and you want direct access to me. Join the boot camp. You don't have to. Here's what other people have said. And you make the call. And I think that's what people need to, they really, really need to look at themselves and say, if I have a product and I want to, or a service and I want to go full time, that's going to be part of it. Selling it is going to be part of it. And it's the worst part, in my opinion, but it has to be done. Awesome, awesome advice. I, I really understand what you're saying because I have 
<clears throat> I've done a lot of self-discovery over the past year around that, and I would say I have learned at the same time you did that very same lesson of my gosh, you just have to, you just have to promote stuff, right? And and uh, there's always going to be those assholes out there who, and I'm I'm just going to say it, they're just the types of people who are just, I mean, you could literally cure cancer, and they would write you a hate letter, right? <laughs> uh, but. Uh, but, you know, so I, I'm now promoting the book not only at the beginning but also the end of this show and uh, have seen a steady stream of sales come in. And I actually have not received any complaints yet. I'm sure I will. Uh, but that's okay, right? That's okay. And, and, and I think it's it's such a good point you made too. It's like 95% of this stuff is free. Can I just promote a little something here, right, like to fund the 95% that I create for free? Right, and it's good stuff. You're giving – Hi, I mean, people don't go to a store and expect to get bread and milk for free, right? right. Like, you know, there's you could go to a food bank. I guess it's a bad example. Go to a food bank, get free food, right? But if you want your own, you want the best stuff, go pay for it. And, you know, I really, that is 100% true, Jeff. I think that it's hard to do, but you have to do it. And there's always going to be haters about it, like you said, who who will send you hate mail for curing cancer and stuff like that. And I've gotten to the point now where... I actually, I, I'm going to be doing a talk shortly um, to a group of entrepreneurs and business people, and it's called "While I, Why I Jump for Joy When I Get an Unsubscriber. Because when uh. I used to get an unsubs- unsubscriber, I would see it, and you know, sometimes people would write the comments, and like, this, like one guy just wrote, this is trash. I was mm. like, okay. You know, but now I'm thinking, those are not the people I want on my website. It's not all about numbers. It's not about having... 100,000 email subscribers. It's about having ones that matter, that like you, and that are committed to the goal that you're committed to, which for me is helping people travel around the world for almost free. So why why would I care if someone unsubscribed if they're going to be a hater? That's better. Like, get out of my life. Get your negative energy out. (laughs) Let's go with the, you know, the 4,000 people who have subscribed who love it, you know? So it's it's hard. You need to have some thick skin, and I do not naturally... So it's a learned process for sure. Well, that's everything with entrepreneurship. And and successful people think that way. It's like, no, I wasn't born with this, but hell, I need it. So let's go figure it out. Let's go make it happen. Right. I sucked at podcasting when I started. Let's get better, (laughs) right? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually really happy. Like I, I I very rarely edit the podcast anymore. Like it's almost all just completely, completely... Uh, and now, see now because I'm thinking about it, I'm stumbling over my words. Right, <laughs> right. Got to relax. Free flowing. Completely free flowing. That's the word. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, so, Travis, last year you said on the podcast, you said uh, when we talked, you said uh, that your biggest regret was not starting sooner. Yeah, and it still is. <laughs> you know, not not now. I've started, but again. Uh, you know, why didn't I start my podcast sooner? Now I have. I've, I've been wanting to develop an app for a very long time, and I've had the idea. I've storyboarded it out. Why have I not gone through with building the app? Some of that is, is money-based because it's going to be expensive, but a lot of it is because now I'm comfortable, right? I know how to post a blog post. Mm-hmm. I know how to record a podcast. I know how you know to run this boot camp. I know all this stuff. So then I just continue to do that. And, of course, you have to upkeep the things you are doing. But I think every one of us who has an entrepreneurial mindset is always looking for the next thing. I'm not sure that in five years I'm going to be writing an extra pack of peanuts. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But there's other things I can be doing, and that goes back to the diversify thing, not just for income, but also for pleasure. You know, I mm. Sometimes I get so sick of writing, hence the podcast. Sometimes I get so sick of writing and the podcast, although yeah. the podcast hasn't happened as much yet. But then, all right, well, let's let's run a community with conference calls. Let, let, what's the thing that you can do to keep it enthralling for you and your audience? And um, yeah, not starting sooner was my big regret. But, you know, I think if you continue to say what's the next thing and go towards it in some degree, that that is what entrepreneurship's about, right? Finding that next thing or taking that next step, even though you don't know how to do it. Awesome, awesome advice. Well, you, what uh, you mentioned that you've done some work, kind of just on yourself, developing your thicker skin and uh, just learning how to cope with things better. Any resources that you'd recommend to our listeners for just becoming uh, a better person who's better able to to be successful? 
Well, I guess having a email newsletter that's trash, right? <laughs> and getting those comments from people. Just no. taking the arrows. Right. But seriously, I think that it's it's hard to do. And I, but I think recognizing that you have to do it, you know, is is part of the process. And I didn't know I had to do it at first. I took every bit of criticism and said, "All right, how can I make it better?" Because it's criticism. And I think there is constructive criticism, and sure. and there's some that's destructive. And so I think. You know, recognizing the difference between that, and I don't really have a resource for that other than the fact that if someone's really hating on what you do, that's probably destructive. If someone's mm -hmm. coming to you and saying, I really like your podcast, but you know, um, maybe it should be edited a little bit more, or maybe it should be edited a little bit less, li listening to them and say, okay, well, they like it, so what are the things I can do to get better? So, you know, filtering out the destructive stuff and going with the constructive stuff is a big thing. But the resources, I haven't really used anything because I've gone on this information diet. I think that is one mm. resource. I am not listening to what other people are telling me anymore, except for a select few people. I, I do. I was fortunate enough to reach out and I guess, you know, now I'm going to give you some resources. But <laughs> I, was, I was fortunate enough to reach out to people that I really enjoyed and, and whose websites I read and I could feel their personality. Um, one, I'll give him a quick plug, is Jacob Sokol over at sensify.com. He was the first person I reached out to. I'm like, you know, your message is so clear of who you are. And when you go to his website, it's him in your face. And he's not the same way as I am at all, but it resonated with me. And I wrote him an email and just said, I love the vibe of your website because I know you instantly from your website. And I just asked him, you know, how did you come to that? And I, it was just a like a short three or four sentence email. I didn't overload him. I didn't know who he was. He wrote me back and was like, you know, I, I'd love to talk with you. Why don't we get on the phone instead of trading emails? And we did. And that was about a year, maybe a little over a year ago. And since then, we have become basically partners in crime. You know, he does a lot. He's a little bit ahead of uh, me and his business. So he's mm -hmm. been helping with that. I've turned around. I've helped him go to Japan for free. He's in Bali awesome. now for free. He's gone to Hawaii. So reaching out to people who you really truly admire and just telling them that not expecting them to get back to you or anything in return and i think building those relationships so now i have about three or four people like that that i go to when i'm struggling when i when those you know your emails or your email newsletters trash people are getting to me and i just say hey i want some honest opinion what do you think i can do is this good is this bad and getting taking their opinions, you know, as well as your own. So the information diet is huge. And then having a few people, and it doesn't have to be people who are more successful than you. It doesn't have to be people in the same niche as you. It doesn't even have to be people who are entrepreneurs. It can be just someone you trust, their opinion, their judgment, and, and really holding on to their opinions and giving back to them as much as they give to you. That is how my self-development has happened. And I mean, let's be, let's be honest here. It is happening as we speak every single day still. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, relationships are key. You talked a lot about uh, on the last time how you developed relationships with other bloggers and used that as a very key strategy to build your to build your your uh, your readership up on your website. How have those relationships uh, helped you over the past twelve months? Yeah, they are invaluable. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give a few tips on how I've got some relationships. This is a strategy I've just started using in the last year, and it's been so helpful. Is a, I'm just really honest when I when I contact someone for the first time. You know, I don't know them. I I tell them what I like about their site. I always give a specific example, you know, a post or something that's really resonated with me, so they know that I am not just someone who wants something from them. But a really cool thing that I've been doing, and I I stole this idea from a guy who did who sent this to me. So uh, Matt Horowitz, this is all all the credit in the world to you. <laughs> he shot me a video message one day, and it was like two minutes, oh, and it wow. just said. Hey, love what you do at Extra Pack of Peanuts. Shot you a video message. Listened to it, you know, watched it and was like, holy crap, like a video, like what? What is a video message, right? Why, why is he shooting this to me? And it was just like him telling me he loved what I did and he, and he was able to get a credit card and travel to a certain place because of me and he just wanted to say thanks. And I instantly wrote back to him. Well, I actually shot him a message back and said, this is the first one I'm doing. I am stealing this idea as long as it's cool with you. And... <laughs> And he was just like, yeah, it, it, go for it, man. And I, every time now um, that I want a podcast guest on, or most times I want a podcast guest on, I shoot him a video message, one or two minutes, and I just say, hey, I really love your stuff. I'd love to have you on the podcast. 
you know, here's why, here's what I want to talk about. I do that. And then if I want to build a connection with someone or if I just want to tell someone how much I like them, because, you know, most people online answer emails all day long. And that's what I've found out now. So I shoot them a video message. A, I don't have to type. And B, they don't have to type back to me. They're just getting a message. So that has worked wonders because awesome. you are, you're building a real relationship. They're as real as it can be. And I think you could speak to this as well, but having the podcast has been amazing for building relationships because when I get off a podcast, I'm I'm basically a friend of that person now. Yeah, you know, we're not just yeah. emailing. We're friends and I always tell them whatever I can do to help you out, you know, let me know and and vice versa. So I've done 32 episodes now and there's not a single person that I've interviewed that I wouldn't feel comfortable emailing asking for you know advice or you know just asking them about something because I feel a thick enough strong enough relationship with them. So really think how you can get a whole like how you can build a relationship a real relationship and always offer more value to the person than you're asking for if you are actually asking and not mm. just saying hey your stuff rocks. Indeed. Awesome, awesome advice, Travis. You know, and, and just uh, you know, we've stayed in touch over the past year, right? We've uh, we've bounced ideas off of each other and um, and all that kind of stuff, it, which is a, a testament to the great relationships that you can build when you're doing a podcast. Yeah, and entrepreneurship is a very solo journey a lot of times, regardless yeah. of the support system you have and how big you are, how big your site is, and the people you know. There's still that element of I'm sitting at my computer, I'm writing, these are my thoughts, these are my opinions, and even people I know with massive communities, we're talking like some of the biggest blogs out there. You know, I, I've had some of them tell me, one, people I've formed relationships saying like, I just don't know if I'm doing things right. And I look at them like, what are you talking about? You know, like, <laughs> you're killing it. And, and, you know, so everyone has that doubt and having a support system around you helps and I didn't have one. And I still am I'm finding my support system, so don't think it's going to happen overnight, mm. but reach out to people that you truly relate with and that you just think do a good job because everyone wants to hear they do a good job. And if you tell them that and, and then provide a way for them to form a relationship with you, it can go a long way. I, I'll put in one quick plug, too, as well. I went to one conference. I, I, I'm not a big on conferences, although I think they are good for networking and maybe making relationships, but if anyone's interested... I went to the World Domination Summit um, run by a guy who's been on my podcast, and probably most people know him, Chris Gelbo, mm -hmm. and a fantastic, amazing guy, probably the best person I know at making relationships with basically anyone and being genuine, and the conference blew me away. I knew I was going to go meet cool people. It, uh, you'd sit in a session, and you know the sessions were decent, but a lot of stuff that I didn't need to know or I didn't care that much about. Um, I shouldn't say about all of them, but some of them. But then you'd be sitting next to someone, and, and I was sitting in a session next to a guy, Stu, and we just started talking travel. And now, you know, it turns out he, he runs a nonprofit in Kenya, and, and I've been helping him travel, and he's been helping with a lot of my stuff because he does a lot of software development. And just you don't know who you're going to run into, and the yeah. people at that conference are absolutely amazing. It's 3,000 people who all want the same thing, and that's to live like an unconventional life and help change the world. So... If anyone's out there thinking, I, I am doing this solo and I'm just looking for a jump start, World Domination Summit, um, it's you know the second week of July usually, something like that. It is worth its weight in gold. World Domination Summit, we'll link, uh, we'll link that up below the show as well. Travis, one last question for you before we wrap it up. How do you define success? For me... Success is just being able to do, I guess it's going to sound selfish, but being able to do what I want to do and getting enjoyment out of it. And of course, if it can help other people, obviously that, that's part of what I want to do is help other people. So that's built into it. But to me, it's not the money. It's not, okay, now you're making more than you ever have. Obviously, that, that opens different doors and, and that is success in some way. But I am much prouder and happier about the fact that I'll get emails from people every day saying, I was able to take my family of four to Disney World for the first time. Mm -hmm. We didn't think it was possible. You've helped us do it. I've always wanted to go to um, Italy, and I've never, ever been able to do it. It was just a dream. Here I am, sipping wine in Tuscany. You know, whatever it is, to me, like, that is what I've wanted out of my life. I've wanted to create something that is my own thing that I can be proud about and that can help other people. And it really is 
a win-win-win for everyone. And so that to me is success. And the fact that it allows me to make good money and then travel around the world and stuff like that, all that kind of extraneous stuff that I want Mm -hmm. or that I think Mm -hmm. is neat and cool, that's great. But the success comes in being able to help other people and knowing that I created it myself and that it's because of my hard work and some luck here and there that I was able to make it. Amazing, amazing advice. Travis, where can our listeners go to get more information about you, more information about Extra Pack of Peanuts, and figure out how the heck to get around the world for like two bucks? <laughs> yeah, two bucks. I mean, <laughs> almost two bucks exactly. I'm, I'm flying down to Rio for the World Cup for $2.50. Are so, you serious? Uh, so you're going to have to scrounge up 50 cents in your couch cushion there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I I will tell people it's not because I'm smart and it's not because I'm super talented that I'm able to travel. It really is open, especially to U.S. listeners. People all around the world can do it, but U.S. listeners especially, um, you can travel around the world to wherever you want and you can do it cheap. And a lot of it's frequent fire miles and then a bunch of other tips and tricks. So if you are interested in that, definitely you go to extrapackofpeanuts.com. That's the, the homepage. There is an email newsletter you can um, subscribe to that, you know, you'll just stay updated and you're going to get my Become a Frequent Fire Millionaire series, which is totally free. And that is basically the best stuff for, hey, I know nothing, Travis. How can I start doing it? And every day you'll get a step one, then the next day. Did you follow up on that? If not, do it. Here's step two. So I would urge people, if they're newbies, to, to sign up for the newsletter for sure. Um, I'm on Twitter now. It's taken me a while to get used to that. It's at Pack of Peanuts. <laughs> Um, I, I found out that um, that's a good way to connect with people so yeah. I should start learning what hashtags are um, and so I'm doing that and I've also started an Insta- well I shouldn't say I, I'm not taking any credit my wife started an Instagram account for me she is the one who understands how to work that so awesome. that's a great place because we post travel pictures all the time and it's just a really quick way to, for people to see where we are and what we're doing so that's at pack of peanuts as well um, and everything else is there. If you're interested in the book and the boot camp, we'd love to have you. But again, 95% of stuff is free if you want the convenience there. there. But those are linked up as well on the website. And um, the site will be having a redesign. So I don't know when people will be coming to it, but hopefully we're looking to launch a redesign around April, make it a lot more user-friendly, visually friendly, um, you know, easier to navigate. So if you are coming after that, I hope you like it. If you're, if you're coming before that, check us out again. I swear it won't look as terrible as it does now. <laughs> I think it looks awesome now, but I'm sure you're going to make it even, even better. What's the name of your book so we can uh, put a link to Amazon? The book, so it's not on Amazon. Oh, okay. It's only, it's only sold, this is another, we could go back to the mistake thing here, <laughs> but um, this is another thing I haven't done yet is put it on Amazon, but it is, it's called The Ultimate Guide to Frequent Flyer Miles. And that um, there's a banner at the top of my site now. You can click on it. You can get all the information there. Awesome. Um, you can also go to extrapackofpeanuts.com backslash ultimate guide. That'll be the book, um, and, and you can buy it. It's a PDF, uh, you, and it's interactive. Uh, so it'll link, it links up to websites and video tutorials and stuff like that. So awesome. yeah, put it on your iPad, whatever. Excellent, excellent. Well, Travis, thank you so much for being on the show. Congratulations on launching this amazing life, which is even more amazing a year later. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Look forward to staying in touch and seeing what awesome things you do next. Yeah, I appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks so much for the opportunity and coming on. What an awesome episode of the How to Quit Working show with Travis Sherry. The the whole show so far has been sort of bookend by Travis and his awesome, awesome journey. He shared some really, really amazing stuff. And I think the really important thing to remember about what Travis has done is he's built relationships very, very successfully. He has a lot of relationships with influential people, and those are the people who help him to be able to, to, to grow his business and to build his business, get more traffic to his website. So if I always tell folks, if there's one thing that you can do, if you can only do one thing to build your business, just create some relationships. Build relationships with other people who do things similar to what you aspire to do or similar to what you're doing, and it's unbelievable how those relationships will pay off in the long run and even in the short run. You know, And, and the other thing that I think is so cool about this industry is that 
when you build these relationships, it's more than just building relationships for business purposes. I mean, Travis and I, over the past year, I would say we've become friends, right? We we email back and forth occasionally and, uh, you know, pass along tips or information or things that we come across that might be helpful or useful to the other one. And we've just developed a really great relationship. And we and we do a little bit of work together, uh, like, like, like the show. So I think that the thing that it's really important to remember in, in creating a business is to build relationships, build relationships, build relationships. And then also, like Travis said, you got to quit caring what people think because no matter what you do, there's going to be people out there who aren't going to like it. And that's been something that I've discovered on my journey and Travis has also discovered. And the earlier that you can get comfortable with people not liking what you do, the more progress you're going to make because that fear of what other people might think holds a lot of people back. And it holds them back in a really big way, unfortunately. So the faster you can get over that and past that, the faster you can make some great progress in your business. So definitely go check out, if you have any desire to travel whatsoever, go to extrapackofpeanuts.com and look at what Travis has to offer because he's got some great, great stuff. He can show you how to travel around the world for practically nothing, and he's got great stories and great anecdotes for anybody who's interested in traveling. Also, listen to his podcast. He's got great guests on there. It's a lot of fun, and it's just fun listening to Travis talk. He's just such a nice, genuine guy and just really a fun person to have in your life and a fun person to have to be listening to or, or interacting with in any way. Now, if you want to create a life of freedom like Travis has created for himself, go over to howtoquitworking.com slash book and pick up a copy of How to Quit Working. I don't care what format, whatever you want it in. Kindle, paperback, PDF, whatever you want, you can get it there. Head over there and get it. And for a limited time, you'll get $150 worth of bonuses. All the instructions are there. You can see exactly what to do. Now, this is the 52nd episode. And I know that this podcast and this show has helped a lot of people to achieve some really great things in their life. It's helped to inspire a lot of people. It's helped show people what is possible. And I want to show more people what's possible. I want to inspire more people and I want more people to quit working and create an amazing life of freedom like my guests do. And one of the ways that you could help me to do that is by rating this podcast on iTunes. So if you go down below the show on the site, if you're in iTunes, you can just click on the stars and give us a rating. If you're listening on the website, scroll down to the bottom of the page and down there I have instructions for how to leave a review on iTunes. I don't care if you buy a copy of my book or not, but if you would do me this one favor, leave a review on iTunes so that we can boost this up in the rankings and so that we can show more people how to quit working and inspire more people to do something different and better with their life than the status quo of getting a job and working for somebody else and all that crap that's just not working for anybody. Anyway, thank you for being with me for the last 52 episodes and I hope that we do another like 75,000 of these shows because I love doing it. I love inspiring you. I love hearing from you. Leave a review, go buy the book, and I will see you next week with another amazing guest who has quit working and launched a life of freedom. Thanks for joining us on the How to Quit Working show. Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.